In this video, we're modeling oak trees with that characteristic bark pattern and moss growth and planting it next to this canal. Hello and welcome to a video tutorial in which we will model a real classic. Yes, I'm talking about the oak. Uh, you know, it's a really nice eye-catcher, both for dioramas and for model railroads. And the, with the method presented here, you can model everything from uh, the typical oak with a round foliage to that very old, like two or three hundred years old, uh, almost completely dead oak. No matter which one you choose, it's always a good eye-catcher for your creation. The trunk and branches are made from steel wire. This is a green coated 0.0 millimeter diameter steel wire, which corresponds to three hundredths of an inch. I start by cutting 12 pieces, approximately 30 centimeters long, which is uh, one foot. Then I twist four of them together like this. And since I had 12, there will be three trunks and these three will each be a one third of the trunk. So what I've done when I have these three is that I twist them together as well. The reason for doing this is that our oak will have three main branches and only a short part of a common trunk. Here's the common trunk and there are the thick branches. The look and appearance of an oak uh, differs a whole lot from based on where they grow. Okay, so now we have three branches. What we'll do now, we'll create a round foliage and uh, to maintain the thickness of um, those uh, branches, we will add in V-shaped branch pieces. So I cut uh, another like 20 pieces of the steel wire. I bend them to V-shape all at once like this. And now as I add in new branches to these uh, three main branches, I add two wires. That way I get uh, a consistent thickness of the branches, branch which continues upwards. Once the new branch gets two wires to start with there. Okay, so I continue in this uh, manner, thinking about that uh, round shape of the foliage and also trying to maintain these uh, three main branches as I progress further up into the tree. I also think I will go for a foliage which is a bit less in density compared to the prototype here. That way it will be more characteristically oak, I think. Okay, now I've progressed so far that uh, we are done with uh, all the branches, which is added in with two steel wires. At this point up in the tree, I'm instead just adding one V-shaped steel wire for every new branch. Here at uh, the end of uh, each uh, of these uh, three long branches, I'm also adding in more br small branches uh, to get uh, more density into the foliage. Once you're happy with that, you can start trimming. So you get that round outline of your tree. All right, now I feel kind of happy with the result. So this is uh, the final result for the steel wire section. We'll make one more thing and we're gonna bend the ends slightly downwards. All right, then it's time to cover up those uh, twisted parts. Uh, we're doing that with the PVA glue. Uh, this is uh, equivalent to Ponal in Germany uh, and um, Elmer construction glue in the United States. I'm applying the glue to the tree with a brush, a stiff paintbrush. And the process here is more like plastering than uh, actually painting. So, and do I do a section at the time and then I'm adding chinchilla sand. This is a type of uh, fine sand uh, which is available in Sioux shops. It's very low cost. 
and I'm sprinkling that into the wet glue and that both gives a bit of structure but also prevents the glue from shrinking all that much when it dries and same thing goes for the bottom part adding richly with glue and then sprinkling chinchilla sand into that now leave this to dry uh, a few hours if you have a heating fan then uh, one hour before it's time to apply the clay yeah well adding the thickness uh, to this tree using a uh, air drying clay this uh, clay does not need to be run in the oven to get hard and it's um, the kind of clay i'm using is from dust dust pronto clay this one happens to be terracotta colored but there are also gray variants available so check for that these are typically kind of hard and dry when you buy them uh, so what you need to do is to spray some water onto them uh, to make them soft and to avoid cracking you see here i struggle with this piece it's uh, way too dry continue to push the clay into that uh, steel wire frame until you feel happy with the thickness then you can continue upwards in the tree here's with the first of those uh, thick branches Here i'm folding the clay around that steel wire base yeah and then spraying some uh, fresh water onto it and uh, smoothen the surface removing any cracks or irregularities because we're gonna make engravings in this surface and then it's good that it's uh, as smooth as possible i'm continuing to add uh, clay to also the other two thick branches and also to some of the major branches going out from those and when i'm ready it looks like this now i leave this to dry at least overnight i recommend actually two nights then the surface is hard and it will look something like this now we will engrave the bark pattern for this i'm using a saw blade it's for my figure saw i used to cut wood and i'm just using that to get that characteristic oak bark pattern yeah something like this i'm engraving both the trunk and the branches everywhere where i have clay uh, because uh, in the next step we will uh, paint this i'm spray painting it and after the paint is applied it's no longer possible to engrave the clay surface here i'm using a brown spray paint to give a kind of foundation and the uniform color of the trunk and branches next uh, step is to add a wash this is a really thin color uh, and it's uh, basically a very dark gray with a touch of olive green by doing that you avoid it looking too bluish and it gets a more warm gray tone and i'm applying it uh, all over the surfaces which has been engraved and you'll see that this is uh, once dry it just stays into the engraved areas more or less like this now next thing we're going to do now is to dry brush this then i take a portion of that uh, same gray green color and in that i'm mixing in white that is to get um, a brighter tone of that same gray color because uh, most often the palais on a tree like this is the same but it's just different tones of of the same color more or less anyway it looks uh, more natural if you do it that way wipe off most of the paint onto a uh, 
piece of paper and then start to dry brush the branches. What this will do is it will highlight all of the elevated uh, portions of the engraved areas. So the lower parts will be look dark and the uh, elevated light gray. Now we can also add some moss. I basically add moss where uh, the, it's, you can uh, supposed to find moss, but also where I'm not entirely happy with the engraving. So it's a bit of a trick there. The moss itself is Woodland Scenic Fine Turf. To get the desired density of the foliage, we must add some static grass. For this, I'm using a 12 millimeter or half inch grass in brown color. And I'm fixing that grass to the branches using PVA glue. That's wood glue or ponal. The glue is supplied with a brush like earlier. And once you have glued the section, I drop in that half inch grass into the wet glue quite richly. Once we completed the application of the 12 millimeter grass, it looks something like this. Leave this to dry now, uh, about an hour at least, then it will look something like this. Next step is to add six millimeter, which is quarter inch grass. Same brown color. And this time we'll instead use uh, spray adhesive to make it stick to also that uh, 12 millimeter grass we just applied onto the branches. Same here, just drop the six millimeter brown grass into the foliage. The foundation for the foliage is fine turf color green grass more spray adhesive and then sprinkle on green grass into the foliage you can fix with uh, more spray glue or if you're happy with application then use spray glue to fix the leaves so i'm also dropping in the leaves both from top but also from the bottom like this so you get leaves underneath the branches if you're standing under the tree looking up you should also have some leaves there all right i think we are about done all we need to do now is to remove any leaves or static grass that uh, may have uh, sticked to the trunk or the thick branches i'm using a soft brush for that next thing is to uh, glue the oak in place onto my diorama this is a diorama i made some time ago of a canal in the netherlands and i think i will place the oak here it occurred to me when I took photos of this uh, diorama, it was looking a bit too flat. So a tree will uh, enhance the appearance of it. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm just scraping off the static grass. It's quite easy to do that. Apply some static grass glue on the ground and then I sprinkle in Woodland Scenic uh, Earth Blend. It's a fine turf. And I put the tree in a pile of glue. I move the glue around. So part of the glue actually will be formed as the root system. And in a similar manner as I did with the branches in the trunk, I will fill the glue here with uh, that same turf material. Uh, earth blend and push that in to the glue and it will be like uh, it's a part of the ground like this if you want to build the root a bit more you can add extra layer otherwise this is what the diorama turned out with that oak in place this is uh, indoor photos i've taken here in my studio it's actually winter outside, so it's kind of nice to have these summer 
images from the diorama. And here is a close-up of the oak. You see the bark pattern, the moss, and how it all turns out. So it's a kind of nice method to make old oaks. All right, I hope you liked this video about how to model oaks. Uh, if you have any questions uh, about the materials or method used in this video, please post them in the comment field below and I try to respond to that as soon as possible. Did you know that this channel uh, is dependent on support? A few of you support viewers are supporting the channel on a monthly basis. So if you want to be one of the good guys, get over to Patreon and set up a support account there from like $1 per month to uh, uh, or make a one-off donation via the PayPal dialogue found in the video description below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and you will get the notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see you.